Hi everyone, welcome back to D4 Data Channel podcast on the topic named entity recognition in the legal domain and with me we have Mr. Sagar and Sagar is a senior data scientist in Thomson Reuters lab which has been recently found in India especially in Bangalore location and uh, he has he has been in this domain for a couple of years and uh, he has having extensive background on data science and he came from a biotech background so i'm really glad that sagar is here today with us in this podcast and welcome welcome sagar thank you deepak glad to be here great so i have a couple of questions for you today so uh, starting from uh, like so 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 the first question like uh, what are the most frequent entities of interest which you are actually capturing in these kind of legal documents uh, well there are several and they kind of vary with the uh, objective that you have with your project um, typically we are interested in capturing uh, names of plaintiffs or uh, sometimes names of courts uh, sometimes references to other cases uh reference to other laws um uh, and a whole bunch of these things uh some of these are even um kind of long and they span multiple um uh, sort of sentences and it's uh, uh we have to come up with clever ways to identify those, those as well so there are just kind of a lot of them types got it got it so in the research paper regarding the ner training so you have mentioned like uh, the ner model is trained with partially completed data so what is the significance of that part actually yes so if you uh, look at the example that we shared uh, the problem that we were solving in this case uh, was we were doing uh, uh, entity entity extraction from text that we got from output of an ocr model so once you get text from ocr uh, anyone who has worked with ocr knows that it's quite challenging um uh, there are there are messy characters uh, sometimes words get uh, you know sort of uh, broken apart uh, sometimes words kind of get joined where they're not supposed to be together and uh, especially in this case we were extracting um, the text from court documents and some of the court documents were in uh, column formats so uh often times the ocr software also just kind of merged the two columns and that led to quite a really uh, challenging scenario uh and so as you can see uh, not all the entities have all the words all the letters correctly contained in them and hence we had to work with the data available which was just partially complete entities understood understood okay so uh going on so like uh like just just like we anyway we when we start working on any r or any type of model in legal like we we will actually refer to like any golden data set which is already available so like were you able to find any such data set for your purpose uh, uh to be honest there is not too much data available in the open domain for uh, legal tasks uh so when uh, this project was started uh, my colleagues mostly started out with the uh, nr data sets that were out in the open to just compare different model performances um but for uh, legal data in fact uh, we had to get the data prepared in house uh, with annotators actually looking at the documents and uh, uh, writing down the entities got it got it okay so uh, like when we when we look into the ner problem like uh, what are the uh, best part like when we kind of consider it as a sequence to sequence generation problem yeah this was quite an interesting direction to be honest because ner traditionally has been about uh, uh, just uh, uh, tagging words as an entity or not um, but uh, sequence sequence kind of uh, gives you a whole different direction to this problem and uh, it was quite creative uh, when i read the paper uh, i found it quite creative um, so uh, if you see the trend in nlp uh, uh, where models are getting larger and larger and models are demonstrating better and better understanding of text uh, it might make sense to uh, leverage that large uh, size of the model and the expertise of the model to just frame your question as uh, a text input uh, and uh, expect text output uh, rather than just uh, ask it to label things and it has worked uh, there are several papers uh, demonstrating this works well got it got it that's that's an interesting uh, direction actually 
because normally it is not considered in that way so uh, like what are the challenges when you consider point generator network to uh, generate the entities in this regard um so uh, from what we uh, had read that uh, I mean, uh, from what i understand there is not a uh, significant prior work uh, in this area uh, using the point generator network uh, to do this so this was really a first and um, uh, it uh, right from the formulation of the problem to figuring out how we um, you know tag the ner uh, uh, and so on uh, even preparing data was uh are all the steps that have to be carefully considered because you have to ensure that you don't mess up your data preparation uh, so, uh and uh, so that the task doesn't happen properly um, so it's hard to point to one significant challenge but i think there are several small small parts that have to all work together well to you know uh, for, for the final model to produce good results cool cool yeah so yeah so you just explained in a bit like how the ocr output is actually extracted and then you are actually categorizing so like uh, what type of ocr you are using for this problem statement is it custom build or like using any third party uh, this particular project used a out of the box ocr system um, in fact in the paper we mentioned that we used the abi uh, software for ocr right uh, okay. but using a custom model wouldn't uh have had too much difference because the input text is quite hard to be honest so uh, the performance may only increase a bit and not significantly we had to tackle this from the rlp side right right so even like uh were there any historical documents documents before 2000 or something uh no there were only documents uh, uh only recent documents i think uh spanning over 2009 to 18 Okay, so even in the recent documents, there were cases where it is image scanned, and we have to use OCR for it. Yes, in fact, a lot of uh, uh, publicly available government documents are just uh, scans. Uh, even in India, this, this is for US court cases. But even in India, if you uh, go to government websites and try to uh, download data, you'll just see like a lot of scanned letters. In fact, all the COVID circulars are scanned copies, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Yeah. So, like talking about the architecture, so you just mentioned about the point generator network. So, what exactly? How how did you design this uh, entire structure, basically? Uh, this is not the first time a point generator network is used. In fact, a point generator network has uh, been demonstrated to perform um, really well in summarization tasks. Uh, so, uh, we took inspiration from that, and the um, idea is to. just reframe the whole problem as a sequence generator generation task rather than uh, in your task um, and so uh, in pointer generated networks what you have is along with your attention mechanism you also have uh, you also give the model ability to just be able to copy words directly from the input into the output and so a model always has to make a choice whether to go into generation mode or to copy mode uh the the main advantage of this is that there are many out of the out of vocabulary words that generator may not have access to but the pointer mechanism can just copy it directly which works really well for entities because most names and uh, sort of these strange terms uh, which would occur as entities are not typically in vocabulary because of their uh, number of occurrences right okay so so what about the sequence length actually like here you mentioned like okay it is uh so like uh how 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 is the kind of like data is actually arranged in the document like how complex that structure is uh yeah sure so the documents are quite long uh, because these are uh, code documents um but uh, and the data when we prepare uh, when we prepared the data uh, we did not actually uh, label the entities because that would be quite laborious but rather what we did is we asked annotators to just uh write down the names of defendants and uh, uh plaintiffs uh, into just a form and so what we had is a document a scanned ocr and uh, we had names of entities as a separate list uh, so um, one would think that you can just simply uh, just search for the entities in the document and just mark them but that approach is not uh, so easy because uh, first of all a lot of times uh, court cases have uh different references to same names uh sometimes you might have 
uh, John Doe. Sometimes you might have Mr. Doe, and sometimes you might have John Space uh, B Space Doe. And so in this, uh, so that that's one of the problems. Second problem is OCR mistakes. Uh, and so, um, uh, uh, but we still try to look at uh, where entities occur. And we did some analysis. What we found is that 85% uh, of the time, the uh, majority of entities have occur in the first 1500 tokens of a document. So then we, what we did is we clipped the document at 1500 and just used the first 1500 as the input. First 15 character has the input. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, uh, yeah. So that that covers the process. So, like, a uh, bit interested about like, okay. So when you design the architecture, like, uh, have you compared with the other board structures? Uh, yes. So we did actually uh, do comparisons with other models uh, that are typically used for any and uh, also uh, publish those comparisons in the paper. Um, in terms of architecture, um, this was the go-to choice because uh, there are a lot of out of vocabulary words. And so a simple encoder decoder architecture wouldn't work. Um, we had to come up with, I mean, at, uh, we had to leverage something that actually has the ability to use out of vocabulary words. Um, so that's why this architecture made a lot of sense. Got it, got it. And, and there are no other language model which has that entire uh, vocabulary of uh, legal vocabulary in legal domain that's also not available right correct the other problem is that there are not too many yeah. uh, big language models which have uh, legal there is uh, legal bird and there are some more models coming up uh, we have a lot of them in house but uh, but we need, we needed a uh, model to have the ability to look at out of vocabulary words understood, understood. okay so okay you did mention about the token length how complex it is and the data set format so like uh, while while training like how like how tedious it was actually like did it take more time or like how was the infrastructure set up for it um the the uh, training was done in tandem with the engineering team so there was a lot of optimization work involved uh, uh, but i think it was uh, uh, it was a bit challenging because uh, you had to uh, do all these experiments and uh, make sure that uh, it kind of works with the hardware that was available. Uh, uh, but I didn't. I don't think there were significant challenges as such in that process. Got it. Got it. Uh, more than any uh, large language model, uh, sort of. I mean, more than a bird model. Correct. Correct. Okay. So, like, one one it is in uh, once it's deployed, like, uh, and in production phase, so. How is the performance of this uh, model actually? Um, so, uh, typically, uh, what we do is we work with the engineering team to make sure that uh, the whole uh, process is uh, uh, hand handed over end to end properly. And uh, um, the engineering team does a lot of optimizations, and those optimizations kind of tend to vary with uh, with respect to the use case. So sometimes some features are a priority, some aspects of performance are prioritized more. Uh, sometimes uh, you know there's a um, uh, there's a different kind of fine tuning. So overall, uh, the performance is not something uh, that's always the end goal because in terms of optimization, uh, what's the end goal is to make sure that it works the best in the environment it's deployed in. So for instance, if it's deployed for a bad job, it's not necessary that it has to run very fast. But if it's in a live interactive product, then there's a lot of attempts made to make sure that it runs really fast. Understood. Understood. Got it. So, uh, yeah, so you just gave me the details of uh, different data sets, actually. So, like, uh, like uh, was it was it like a collection of so many data set or like was it readily available in few repositories which you already have? Uh, this is publicly available data, which was... Uh, okay. um, painstakingly obtained and uh, put together into one large data set. Uh, all of it is done in house. It's not available openly. Okay, okay. So it's all in house data set basically. I mean, it, the, the documents are public liable and OCR software is right. also are public liable. So it's it's possible to reproduce the whole thing uh, easily. Okay, okay, cool. So yeah, so you, you mentioned about the other structures. So like, uh, so yeah, I can see space E then CR of digital word. So like I'm I'm a bit curious actually here like uh like so when it came to performance like 
like how it is kind of like improved so much in terms of result actually what what is your thought on that um uh, i would say that a lot of the performance gains are from the domain uh, because the legal data is so different from regular text um and the second is um that because uh the entities in legal domain also tend to be kind of a bit different than uh, regular text uh, i would say that it's uh, uh you can you can and that kind of explains it and uh, there's also some credit that goes to this new architecture uh, which led to performance gains right right so is it is it is this particular architecture being used in other system or like is it only used for uh this particular purpose uh so this architecture uh, was the the paper that uh, introduced the architecture was targeted for summarization uh so you can okay. typically use this for sequence to sequence models uh but this is okay. the first we saw it in any year okay okay because i saw one uh paper from tr labs itself on summarization so i think that came first i believe with the pointer generator at all um i have to look at the exact times but yeah it's possible okay. right right okay okay yeah then then thanks a lot uh, sagar actually for giving such a interesting um uh, uh, content on this particular nr and uh, like I, i'm really surprised like how the model got so much advanced on that particular front when we used a different sort of algorithm actually and i and i, I think it's true like when you use the language specific component i think like it it can it it like i think that would be the main game changer actually in this particular case yes so, in fact one of the future directions uh, being explored is uh, to use a larger bert language uh, bert based uh, bert kind of architecture language models uh, which are specifically uh, tuned on for uh, legal data so that's also being explored right now actually cool 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 yeah then then thanks a lot thanks a lot sagar actually for uh, being in this particular session and uh, yeah have a great day thank, thank you deepak you have a great day